Today we're sitting with Felix, one of our favorite buyers agents, um, to give you a bit of tips on some of the things that we're experiencing in the market today and some of the fears that some buyers have. With a changing market, I think it's important to get someone like Felix, who's an expert in buying, to discuss how he buys or you know, what some of the things that we're actually experiencing. The first question is, as an experienced buyer's agent, what would your best advice be for the buyers looking in today's market? Sure, so the best advice I could give any buyer looking in today's market is they need to be extremely diligent with regards to understand the true value of a property. So the banks as well as the valuers are not as forgiving or as flexible, especially after the Royal Commission. So a lot of buyers out there, they jump on real estate and they can consider that as research. They're actually just searching. But to us, where the power is in understanding the true value of a property is through your endless inspections and attending auctions, because then you can truly understand the features of a property and what the true value comparable sales are. How many homes would you expect buyers to go through before they they did their proper research? Well, when I was starting out as an investor, I went through on average about probably 20 to 30 properties a week. And wow. with, yeah, you and, very busy. <laughs> yes. So, and within a good space of a month, you could really understand that market. But you need to have that level of due diligence because in this market, the fear is overpaying and the banks aren't forgiving anymore. A lot of people go off at realestate.com or mm. and they're uh, assuming the prices, you know, what they show on online. And the danger there is you can have a three bedroom home that's a certain size and you can have another three bedroom home Correct. that's double the size. Yes. You know, yet they're both put in the same basket yep. and valuing. That's right. Computers. Yeah. And even the, the scape of where it's positioned, one could be on the high side of the road, one could be the low side, that can change the valuation completely. It's definitely a buyer's market and there are amazing opportunities out there, but I've always been under the philosophy that you shouldn't buy a property just for the sake of buying. Buying a property should coincide and obviously work and fit well with you, not only your financial position, but also your lifestyle, just to ensure, because the last thing you want to do is buy a property and then find out you're eating bacon, <laughs> baked beans and toast for dinner. The biggest fear out there at the moment amongst the buyers is they're gonna buy now and have to sell later at a lower price. What's your take or best advice in regards to, to people thinking that way at the moment? Yeah, and look, that's the big concern on everyone's plate at the moment, whether you're a downsizer or an upsizer or even an investor looking to sell to capitalize on this market. What you need to understand is that whether you're buying in low and selling low, it's all relative. As long as you're doing that in the same market, it's not gonna affect your position. But what we always suggest and recommend is that you do a financial or a financial analysis feasibility on this to understand what it's gonna to cost you to sell and rebuy in that market, just to ensure that you can financially sustain that. Because the last thing you wanna do is sell and then find out that you can't borrow enough money to buy in your desired area. I think you need to factor in, you know, if it's an investment, the capital gains tax that you're gonna to have to pay, but also the entry price back in the stamp duties and all the legals that come with it. So a lot of people don't look at that. Um, and it's, it's really important because the banks aren't as generous as what they used to be. So if you're trying to target a, another area where it could be of a more high density, you may not be able to get back in there. So you'd just be holding the money in bank and earning 1% interest. So I've always been a, an individual and always been a buyer's agent that's not just about the transaction and not just about the property. It's all about understanding the client's needs, requirements and their journey. And we build it a customized appro approach around that. So I take the time to listen, to understand what they're looking to do. And then we kind of work backwards to then uncover the right property to suit their brief. I know a lot of, uh, a lot of clients uh, would love to use the services of a buyer's agent. Yep. I know a lot of them don't really like the financial side of things. Mm. So I know you, you, you have just started another side of, of that. Yeah. Do you just want to explain a little bit to, about how your coaching side? Sure, goes? yeah. So we recently we launched a, a property coaching side of our business. So for us, it was all about giving the clients not only a pathway to go down to understand what to buy, but more so the tools and support they need. So what we found that is a lot of individuals or buyers out there don't have someone independent they can turn to for the right level of advice. And so that's why the coaching services became so valuable because a client or a buyer could just turn to us and say, hey Felix, I'm interested in buying this area. What are your thoughts? You know, or I'm looking at making an offer. What's the best way to position that and how do I ask the right questions? Yeah. So with that coaching service, we actually provide them the support, the tools and the mentorship through that. Yeah. That'll be a 
a great thing, especially with the first home buyers that Absolutely. Don't, don't quite understand the market. They've got their parents helping. And it's, yeah. I know a lot of as parents do, want the best <laughs> for their kids. <laughs> and it'd be good to get another, another point of view from yourself as yeah. well. Yeah. And look, so what's the best way to work with you? I mean, for clients that are actually interested in your services? Yeah, look, we, we like to work personally and one-on-one -on -one with the client, so it's always about having that interaction and face-to-face -face engagement. So whether it's over the phone, through you know, the internet or catching up, we're, we're, you know, we're always contactable. Well, for more information, go to martinpartners.com.au.